Praise God once again. I want to thank God for his goodness. I believe that by this time, you've been thanking God. You've been thanking God. As I was so guilty the last week, in fact, I've started seriously giving God the thanks that he deserves. And, and, and this is Touch of Hope coming to you from some of this ministry. And we pray and we thank God that the Lord has been so good to all of us and we need to give him that, 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 that aspect of our lives, being thankful. And today I want to continue with our topic, the power of gratitude. Can we share a word of prayer? Father, I want to bless your name. I want to thank you for the gift of life. I want to thank you for the privilege you've given to us to be among the living. I want to thank you, the Lord, if it would not have been you, we don't know where it would have been by now. It is of your grace, by your grace, by your... Everything we are is all by yours. We don't own anything on our own. We give you praise, we give you honor. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord. And I pray that God, may this broadcast be a blessing to our hearers and those who are viewing us. We believe that God will be blessed and things will turn out for their good. In Jesus' name, Amen. Today has to do with the part two of it. We are looking at taking our, sub, our topic from Luke chapter 17, the verse 11 to 19. And may I introduce this topic to you by saying that always remember that ingratitude will shortcut your future blessings. Always have this in the back of your mind. If, if at the end of the day you don't pick anything, take this word. Ingratitude will shortcut your future blessings. People who are not grateful with what God has done for them or people has done for them never receive more. And I pray. You see, you will not value even pure water. When pure water, so, now pure water, oh, the man, I mean, I say, you know, no. Where has a rich man who was requesting that Abraham should send Lazarus only to dip his hand in the water? How can that quench somebody says? But let me tell you something. We need to understand. We are where we are because We've been ungrateful to God and the people who have been a blessing to us. Number one, thank God for giving you opportunity to meet him now that you are alive. Thank God for giving you the opportunity to meet him now that you are alive. <laughs> hey, if you die without knowing Christ, it's, it's dangerous. And if you know Christ, you must be impactful because your life, you are kind for your life. And so, any day you sleep and you wake up, you need to be grateful to God that he has given you another opportunity to meet him now that you are alive. In Luke chapter 17, the verse 11 and 12. And it came to pass, as he went to Jerusalem, that he passed through the midst of Samaria unto Galilee. And, Gal and Galilee, sorry. In the midst of Samaria and Galilee. And as he entered into a certain village, there met him ten men that were lepers, which stood afar off. Jesus went out from Jerusalem and passed through Samaria and Galilee. And gallery. Then the Bible said there were certain, as Jesus entered into certain village, he met <laughs> ten lepers. Meeting Jesus alone is enough to say thank you. Those of us that have received the salvation, let's thank him. Those of us that are not saved, let's thank him now so that today we'll make the decision. Bible said that do not harden your heart if you hear his voice. Today is a day of salvation. The met meeting Jesus alone is one of the greatest opportunities. They've been there for long. They were cast out from the town because in those days, lepers don't stay in the city. Lepers are cast out from the city. Lepers are not allowed to get closer. But that day, 
although they are not allowed to get closer, but they had the opportunity to meet Jesus. And that alone is something we need to be grateful to. When we are talking about lepers, maybe we, we may just think about them. But you and I are also lepers. The word lepers or being a, a, a leprosy stands for uncleanliness, stands for sin. So we are. But we should be grateful to God that he has given us the opportunity to meet him. We should be grateful to God if you want to look at our sinful nature and our behavior. We shouldn't be alive today. But we thank God for his faithfulness. Number two, thank God for giving you special attention with his divine help over your life daily. Thank God you will Hmm. You, you don't know. You let me read a passage before I tell you what I did to tell you. Hmm. The verse 13 and 14. And they lifted up their voice and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. And when he saw them, he said unto them, Go show thyself, or go show yourself unto the priest. And it came to pass, that as they went, they were cleansed. One thing I've been pre- I, I When you wake up, you don't have food to eat. But you are held priests. Dance around. Make noise and dance around. If you walk from maybe 20 miles, just thank God. I want to tell you something. One of the greatest gifts you can ever have is to walk in divine health. Even if there's no money in your pocket, but you are healthy, you can look for some, something to do to get the money you are looking for. Jesus gave them special attention and I believe that God day by day he's giving us special attention. Day by day he's giving your family special attention. Day by day he's giving your ministry special attention. Day by day he's giving your, your, your children special attention. You may perhaps have lost some loved ones. Hey, that is God's his sovereign way to take somebody out and we cannot blame him for anything. But I want to tell you something. You always thank God for giving you special attention. When we cry, he hears. Maybe you may not feel well right now, but I pray for you. May God bring his divine healing over your life. I know what I've been through. Three years being in pain. I will not tell you that all my pains are gone. No. No. But I'm forever grateful. There's a song. I'm forever grateful. I'm forever grateful if God leads me this way to the day he will call me. I'm, I will forever be grateful. Forever be grateful. So when you wake up and you can move your leg, when you wake up, you can open your eyes. You, when you wake up, you can stretch your hands. When you wake up, you can breathe. You have to thank God and stop the complaints. I'm telling you something. When they were good, Jesus gave them special attention. He listened to them said, go show yourself to the priest. And the Bible said, on their way going. Sometimes, our healing depends on our obedience. Maybe God is directing you to do something. Some of the healing has to do with confession. James chapter 5. He said, confess your fault one to another, pray for one another, and so shall you be healed. To some of the diseases is about confession. Even the verse 15 and 16, it says, Is anyone sick among you? I think from verse 14, yeah, when you start from verse 13, that was, Is anyone sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church, let them pray for him. And the Bible said they should anoint him with oil. And if he has, he has sinned or committed a sin, they should forgive him. And the prayer of faith shall save the sick or shall heal the sick, and the Lord shall lift him up. So, 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 priests. You need to be grateful to God. You may be going through some pain in your bodies. You may be going through, as I'm talking now, there is some pain. You, you, you are going through some pain. Your body, some part of your body is not responding well. But if you can thank God now, 
that God, even in the midst of this pain, I thank you that I'm still alive. In the midst of this pain, the disease that I have right now, it has caused somebody's death. It has led somebody to their grave, but I'm still alive. If you can continue to thank God, that's one of my secrets. When I could not talk, when I could not walk, when I, when, when I was just bedridden and, and I could not do anything, I do everything on the bed. Let me tell you, one of the things that really helped me, I'm speaking out of experience. This is an experiential knowledge I'm giving to you. I kept on thanking God. Day by day, I kept on thanking God. I could not walk, I kept on thanking God. I could not speak, I kept on thanking God. I was in pain, I kept on thanking God. And as I keep on thanking God day by day, and as I keep on thanking God day by day, hey, all of a sudden, there was when one day I, I, I tried to voice out and I realized that my vocal cord, although it was very rough, you could not hear well because over one year I had to use whistle, I had to whistle to call my children and my wife or sometimes write to show them what I did. Be grateful to God. Number three, learn to show your greatest gratitude to God through humility, honor, and worship. Learn to show your greatest gratitude to God through humility, honor, and worship. Verse 15 and 16. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back and with a loud voice. And I'm sorry. You don't know what you are talking about. You don't know what you are talking about. Can you mute or can you mute your voice or zip your mouth? You don't know what you are talking about. I, 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 I've not traveled the aircraft before, but I learned that those of us outside, the noise we hear about the aeroplane, those who are sitting in it doesn't hear it. So you can tell us that we are making noise. I'm not a tree. I'm not a tree to come to church and stand like that. And I cannot open my mouth to shout and say, God, thank you. The Bible said, let everything that have breath praise the Lord. Even the trees, they praise God. Even nature, praise God. The sea, praise God. Read your scriptures, they are all there. Don't go and carry anybody ideology. I don't, I don't talk about it as a theology. It's, it's ideology. People culture and the way, of, the way they do their things. Come and impose it on anybody. The people told Jesus, tell them to shut their mouth because they are making noise. And Jesus said, well, even if I shut their mouth, I can raise stones. Stones! To praise me. In the verse 16, the Bible says, And he fell on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. When he saw, the rest saw it, but did not acknowledge the one who brought that healing to him. It is not serious. I think, I don't know, you see, it's not thanksgiving. You, you can give offering as thanksgiving. You can choose every month. Put something special in an envelope. And go and put it at the altar. And say, God, I thank you for my life. I thank you for my family. I thank you for this. If you don't have money, you can come with a loud voice and sing praise unto the Lord. The man praised God, lifted up his voice. He came and, and knelt down under the feet of Jesus Christ. Form of worship, a form of humility. And said, thank you. So you can come in any form. Have the right motive and do what is right. Let us be grateful to God. Let us be grateful to God for all that he has done. Day by day. When you go out in the morning, you return in the evening. Look back. There are many things God doesn't open our eyes to see. The car you sat in and came home could have crashed. You could have died. But somehow, some way, God delivered you. You, you. you think because there's a road that you have to drive through that road and come back home. No. You may choose not to believe. 
but there are wicked spirits. Read Psalm 91. There are spirits that operate in the morning. Some operate in the new day. Some pray, operate in the night. Some pray at midnight. Some operate in the evening. Let me tell you, there are things. It is the grace of God. Though. The grace of God that is taking us out and bringing us in. That very road that you'll be crossing day by day. Somebody made an attempt to cross and it could not return back. Are we better than those people? No. No. Please. Number four. Disassociate yourself from ungrateful people because thanksgiving brings God's divine healing into our life. Disassociate yourself from ungrateful people because thanksgiving brings, let me add this word, a complete divine healing into our life. Hmm. Look at the verse 17 and 19. And Jesus answering said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? There are not found that return to give glory to God. Save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way. Thy faith has made thee whole. They were cleansed, but they were not made whole. <laughs> you don't know. I can give you two illustrations. Two people can have one disease and they can find themselves in a the hospital. And they can treat them for them to get healed. Or maybe the bill that they will bring to them may be above them. Although they are healed and discharged, but just because they didn't even have the money to pay, they are not made whole. <laughs> That's just one aspect of it. They were cleansed, means that the water that were dropping from their hands and their feet got dried up. But their fingers and those things did not come back. The one who came back, when Jesus said, Go, for you have been made whole, your faith has made you whole. Those fingernails came and said, Oh, Pastor, how did you know this? I'm making this reference to 2 Kings chapter 5. When Naaman, who was a leper, went to Elisha, and Elisha told him to wash himself in River Jordan seven times. He was trying to disobey, but his, his servants were wise enough to tell them, Look, there's nowhere to raise your shoulders, humble yourself. After he washed himself, the Bible said that when he came back, his skin was like a baby. Everything came back. And I believe Jesus is more powerful than Elijah. I believe when Jesus told this man that you have been made whole, I believe that the fingernails, everything came back. And the rest went with half healing. But this man had a complete healing. Please, I will encourage you. If, if you are working with somebody that is, is ungrateful people, I think you have to disassociate yourself. If you have a friend that is, is always ungrateful, disassociate yourself from them. I'm telling you, for me, you give me one pure water, I will send you a message. If I meet you, I will thank you again. For you just thinking about me and using four CD or one dollar to buy me a bag of pure water. Among the thousand, you've decided to use your one dollar or your five cities to buy me pure water. Hey, if everybody is doing that to me, there's no way I have to buy water. So, if somebody, I, I don't take it lightly. And I pray for all those who have been personally been, been, been a blessing to me. I pray. That may God continue to bless you. All those who have been a blessing to others, may God restore and give you back. Whoever you are supporting, maybe you are praying, maybe I, I pray that may God really bless you out of that. And let me conclude by saying that God only gives more of his blessings to those who appreciate him always. God only gives more of his blessings to those who appreciate him Look at this leper. They cried out and said, Lord, have mercy. Today, are you here? You don't know the Lord as your personal savior. 
His mercies are forevermore. You want to say, Lord, have mercy upon me, a sinner. Like the two people that went to the temple to pray. One was boasting about what he could do, but the sinner stood afar off and said, Lord, be merciful to me. And he was justified. Can you just say the same? If you are ready, say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for giving me this opportunity. Have mercy upon me. Wash me with your blood. Write my name in the book of life. Help me to serve you all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. May I pray for you. Father, we pray. Today we realize we don't want to become like the nine. We want to become like the one who returned and said thank you and giving glory to God. We worship you. We bless you. May our gratitude today bring us abundance of your blessing. Thank you once again for the privilege given to us. In Jesus' name, amen. This is Samara Bese, and I want to thank you for being with us. And I want to encourage you to subscribe and also share it on your, all your platform and tag the bell so that any not notification you can just find out. We also want to take this opportunity to thank our partners, our partners. You, you are the one making this ministry the way it is. I think in Luke chapter 8, the Bible spoke about certain women and others who really ministered to Jesus. So Jesus could not stop going to cities and towns and preaching the gospel with his 12 disciples. There were people who were financiers into that ministry. And that's why his ministry were able to run across the globe wherever he found himself. And so I want to thank you for all that you are doing for us. We say God bless you. We'll continue also to pray for you that God will bless you more. God bless you so much until we meet again next week. Amen.